Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, we are in the shop today with my new toy because it is a balmy 14 degrees outside. So I don't know if it's cold where you guys are, but most of the United States is experiencing um, some Arctic air. So I think it's supposed to get down to like nine degrees tonight. So definitely not doing anything outside. So this is, like I said, my new toy. This is the Maxant 600 series heated bottling tank that I picked up from the North American Honey Bee Expo, and I'm pretty excited. So I just put it together uh, yesterday, and I'll kind of talk a little bit about what the different parts are. So this is a company, Maxant, out of Massachusetts. So this shipped and arrived uh, just a few days ago. I think it's roughly, you know, 80 pounds. It's built like a tank, so it's solid stainless steel, this heated bottling tank is water jacketed, which means that there's, you know, about a one inch layer of water that is going to surround the inside tank. Um, and I'll tilt it. This is a stainless steel cap for it. Really nice. I'll tilt it forward a little bit so you can see it, but you can see how thick it is here. And there's a layer of water that will go inside there that I'm going to fill up here in just a minute. So TIG welded, all the welding joints look great. Came with a nice uh, glass-faced thermometer. It's got a piece of glass-sided uh, water column here, which lets you know how much water is in the tank other than just looking down in here and trying to eyeball it. Um, brass fittings. It has a Chromalox heating element. So that heating element is about that long that goes inside the bottom of the tank here. And uh, all the... Uh, uh, the plug, everything is stainless steel. This um, goes up to, looks like 250 degrees. Obviously, we're not going to need to do that. Although for cleaning purposes, it might be good to put water in here, get it really hot, and run it through whenever you're done bottling honey. So obviously, the purpose of this is to bottle honey. It's hopefully much nicer and easier than the, the old honey gate method I was using before. So I'm pretty excited to give this thing a try. At some point, I'm probably going to build some sort of fashion, some sort of cart system that I can put this on so that I can move it around the shop a lot easier. A lot of people ask what these rods are for. This is so you don't accidentally smack into this uh, piece of glass and break that. So I figured I'll go ahead and put some water in here uh, it, to get this thing ready. So it takes somewhere between three and four gallons of water. You want to make sure that you use distilled water because if you just use normal tap water, the calcium and the magnesium that's in that water over time is going to build up on this heating element. So you really want to use distilled water and it's not that expensive anyway. I was talking to Bill, who I think is the uh, chief operating officer for Maxant, and he was saying roughly you probably want to replace the water once a year. But it also probably depends on how much bottling you're doing. I may not replace it once a year. I may go every other year. But ultimately, the, the, the test would be like how much is uh, any type of calcium or magne magnesium is building up on this element. But if you use distilled water, there's no calcium and magnesium in, in distilled water. So we'll see how it goes. Maybe over time, just heating and cooling the water may uh, just need to be replaced. So this is their, I forget what they call it, but it's their bottling valve. Pretty slick. There's, if you go on their website, you can see what's in here. It's got a piston. It's got some springs, one-handed operation. There's, there's a little piston right here. So I'm anxious to try that out. They said to use, and I've got food grade grease here. You want to make sure that you keep this piston in here well greased. So I'm going to put a little bit of food grade grease on that. Um, the thermometer is the true indicator of what temperature your honey is. Now I'm going to try to bottle my honey around 90 degrees and see how that goes. Sometimes you have to get it a little warmer, especially if it's really thick honey, like what I had this last spring, where it was like thicker molasses, you may have to go up to about 100 degrees. Now, that will not impact the enzymes, the beneficial enzymes within the honey. Everything will still remain intact. However, you know, I was listening to Bob Benny give a, a presentation on this at the North American Honey Bee Expo. And he said, I don't, I don't care what anyone says, and I'm paraphrasing here, when you raise the temperature of honey, it does change its chemical properties to an extent. 
Now, he was showing a graph where almost exponentially, the hotter it goes, if you get up into the 110, 120 range, 130, 140, it's really changing the honey. But to his point, when he said, you know, if anybody ever comes back and says, oh, you should never warm your honey for bottling or recrystallizing or any other purpose like that, his counter argument to that was, well, many of these colonies that are in the United States and many parts of our country, the natural outside temperatures will get above 90 degrees. You may get a day that's 100 degrees, and if you have the sun beating down on a hive, the inside of that hive is definitely above 100 degrees. So it's happening to the honey whether you do it yourself or not, so was kind of his response. And logically, that makes pretty good sense to me. So I'm going to try this because it's, it's very difficult to, not very, but it's difficult to bottle really thick honey because it's just really slow and it takes a lot of time. If you can warm it just a little bit, it makes the process a lot quicker and easier for us. And also, if your honey starts to crystallize, you can put it in here, warm it up, and that'll take care of the crystallization. So I'm, I'm anxious to try this. I, my long-term goal is to hook this up, and I can take this valve off and hook it up to a bottling machine, which I can predetermine and put in the amount, whether it's half a pound, one pound, and it'll have a scale on it, and it fills the bottle to the exact amount, so therefore I'm not having to eyeball it every time. So we'll get there eventually. Uh, this is a five gallon bucket holder. I think it's pretty slick. The way that this works is stick it on the edge of the tank there. You take your five gallon bucket of honey, invert it, and it basically just holds the five gallon bucket of honey while the honey is draining out of the bucket. So you're not standing here holding it the entire time. So I thought that was pretty slick. So let's go ahead and start filling this up with water and we'll see how well I got my fittings on with the Teflon tape and hopefully we don't have any leaks. So again, this should take somewhere between three to four gallons of distilled water. So we'll give this a shot here. I'm curious, anyone else that has any heated bottling tanks, shoot me a, a, a note in the comments and tell me which bottling tank you have and what you think of it. Do you really like it? I did a little bit of research and I was either going to settle on this one or the Lyson, Lyson was the other one that I was looking at. And I just, I don't know, these Maxant ones seem really well built to me. So, and it even says uh, built to last a lifetime. And like I said, the thing is built like a tank. So I am expecting this to last a lifetime. So I'm going to go ahead and put the next uh, three gallons in here and grease the uh, fitting. And then we'll go ahead and start to get some honey in here. Okay, well, it turns out um, you need more water than three to four gallons. You need six gallons, actually. So I ran out of water, had to stop the video, <clears throat> go back to the house and distill a couple more gallons, which I've went ahead and filled up. And so you can see here in the sight glass where the water level is about right here. Now you don't wanna completely fill it all the way up because when this heats up, I'm anticipating that the water may expand a little bit when it gets hot. So that way it has some room in here to expand and not spill over. So the way, again, the way this works is this heating element here heats up the water surrounding the honey, which then warms the honey uniformly from the bottom and all the way around. So pretty slick. So I've got, I don't know, roughly a gallon, gallon and a half maybe of honey left. I just tested it and it was 16 and a half percent moisture content. So really good. So we're going to go ahead and pour this into the Max Ant bottling tank. So this is, I believe, just called a bucket holder. So I'm just going to set this. Let's see. I'll set this here so you all can see the honey. And this is a little bit darker honey. So I think this is from my fall harvest. Yeah. I think this has quite a bit of tulip poplar in it, which personally is my favorite honey. Uh, I haven't had every honey out there, but tulip poplar honey to me is you know, dare I say it, the bee's knees, it's pretty good. So let's go ahead. And again, the way this works is you just turn your bucket upside down. This holds your bucket so you don't have to stand there and hold it. So we'll go ahead. I've got this plugged in. I have it turned off right now. 
So I'm going to wait till I get the honey inside and then I'll turn it on. So let's go ahead. Shouldn't be too difficult because there's not a ton of honey in here. Uh. Yeah, that's definitely, definitely pretty slick. That's easier than holding it for sure above your head. Uh, so we'll go ahead and let that drain out. Um, one thing I noted that I didn't mention uh, before in the video, as I was cleaning this out, because I wanted to clean it out with um, some soap and water and rinse it out and make sure it was good and sterile and clean in there. One thing I noted is that this thermometer actually goes all the way through to the inside of the tank. So you can't see it, but if you were to look down here, you can actually see the end of the thermometer sticking out in here. And the reason that's a good thing is because it's going to measure the true temperature of the honey, not necessarily what the temperature of the water is, because that's what you want. You want your honey. And again, I'm going to try to see if I can get to it to be around 90 degrees um, and bottle it at that temperature. I really don't want to have to go up to 100 if I don't have to. 60 and a half percent honey is somewhere in the middle. It's not super thick. It's not super runny. I had spring honey this year that was thicker and snot. It was 14 and a half to 15% water content. And it is very thick. I, I actually still have quite a bit of it. I've been taking a spoonful of it every morning just to kind of help with these, you know, indoor allergies and stuff this time of year and to try to stay healthy. And it takes forever to get it, to get to the bottom of the squeeze bottle, to get it on a spoonful. So I, I like thicker honey. Some people, you know, they don't like it as much or they, they want it to be a little higher moisture content, but 60 and a half is right there in that sweet spot. So, and you can kind of tell you, you do this long enough. You can kind of eyeball where the honey's at. So I'm going to let this drain for a while and then I'm going to turn this on. I was reading Max Ant's instruction booklet and they said, typically there's about a two degree difference between what you set this at and what the actual temperature of the honey's at once this completely warms up. So, so yeah, I'm going to let that drain. I'm going to go ahead. I've got it plugged in. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. I just heard it click there and they said it's perfectly normal to hear. So I'm going to let that element heat up this water. Of course, I think it's safe to say you never, ever, ever want to turn this on if you don't have any water in your tank because you could burn out your heating element, and I'm sure these are not cheap. So, Oh, I also forgot to mention at the very beginning of the, uh, of the video that this is not a paid promotion. I bought this with my own hard-earned money. So uh, they did have a sale at the North American Honey Bee Expo, so I jumped all over that. Plus, I didn't have to pay for shipping, so that was great. So, um, so yeah. But again, I'm just going to give my honest opinion of this. Uh, from everything I've seen, it looks really well built, great. I'm anxious to see how it actually works with warming the honey and bottling it. So I'll go ahead and wait until this is done. Let this get warmed up to temperature. We're going to be looking for this to get around 90 degrees. It's currently around 70. That's what it is here in the shop. It's really cold outside, so glad to be in here. But... Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and get this warmed up and then I'll show you guys uh, bottling a few bottles and we'll see, we'll see how this uh, bottling valve works. So, all right, we've got it all heated up here. It's at about 91 degrees. I heard the rheostat kick off, so I think it's going to maintain that temperature. It only took about 10 minutes to heat up. This is uh, quite a big heating element. I think it's 1800 watts, 15 amps. So it's uh it runs off 120, not 240. So, but it did a really good job. It heated up this water real quick, nice and warm. You can just feel it; it's warm to the touch. So, let's see how it bottles. Oh yeah, filling up quickly. Wonder if I, yep, if I start to back up on off the handle, kind of like a throttle. And they claim this is the no drip valve. So let's see. There's one drip. I think Bill is telling me, yeah, to wait. And technically you could, you know, wipe the bottle, but, and that's slick. Let's try that again. That was easy. Yeah, definitely having the honey warmed a little bit certainly helps. This is filling up pretty quick. And 
and then wait for that second drop. There it is. Wow. Uh, I can't tell you how happy this makes me because this is so much easier than using that honey gate that I was using on the front of a five gallon bucket, you know, but Hey, we all have to start somewhere, right? I mean, can't always start right off the bat with all the toys. And of course I had to have a little sample myself. This it tastes so good. I really love this honey that's got the tulip poplar in it. That's just my personal preference. There's plenty of people that like the lighter honeys. I wonder if I just, yeah, there you go. So you can. Is that it? All right. Yeah. So, I mean, just quickly filling four bottles there. Probably feels even quicker if you, you know, if this thing's full of honey and you've got more weight behind it, you know, with this only being about a little under what two gallons in there, it's not coming out probably as quickly as it would if there was more honey in there. But shoot, this is so much better than what I had before. Well, I'd have to say I'm definitely a fan. Uh, well constructed. It was. Pretty simple to put together. It didn't take me hardly any time to get all those fittings on there. Get the thread, the Teflon tape on there was easy. I, I had zero leaks right out of the right out of the gate here. No water leaks. And at this rate, I could definitely fill, you know, maybe a hundred bottles in an hour or so. That's it'd be pretty quick. Like I said, at some point I may you know, end up upgrading and take this off to one of those automatic bottlers, but that's going to be down the road. For now, this is going to suit me quite well, especially since, you know, I'm, I bottle all of these myself. So I'm a one man operation here. Yeah, there's a little drip there. So you just wait for that second little drip and that's it. I mean, I think I had one tiny little bit hit the floor there, but that was it. Usually with a honey gate, I'm, you know, wiping, waiting, trying to just fill it too much, go back. So this is definitely a vast improvement for my operation. That's for sure. And there it goes. Wow. And it stayed it's climbed a half degree on me. So about 91 and a half there. And I haven't heard this kick back on yet. So just nice and warm to the touch. So very cool. At first I wasn't sure if I wanted one that was water jacketed, but now that I think about it, having that layer in between the honey and the elements where it's water, I think is going to provide a more uniform warming than to have a bottling tank that just has elements buried in it because then you could probably get your honey too hot too quick. Maybe not, but this seems to be a really good setup. So I would definitely recommend this if you're in the market for a heated bottling tank. I really don't think you can go wrong with Max Ant. This is their first product that I've personally used. I have other beekeeping friends that have used Max Ant products and they swear by them, which is another reason why I wanted to make sure to check them out when I was at the uh, North American Honey Bee Expo because I knew they were going to be there. But uh, yeah, I mean, this, this stuff is certainly built to last and I'm sure that's why they have that as their logo, built to last a lifetime. This is definitely something I could see lasting my lifetime and maybe, who knows, hand it down to one of my kids if they decide to become a beekeeper. So uh, but yeah, I would definitely recommend this. Definitely recommend this Max Ant uh, bottling valve. I know it's a little pricey. I want to say it retails for like, is it $260, $267, something like that. So not cheap, but just just using that, that was an absolute breeze, especially if like me, you're, you're sitting there in front of a five gallon bucket with a honey gate going like this, trying to bottle your honey. I did several hundred bottles that way and I am done never again. So <laughs> I'm happy to have this. And 
I'm hoping to be able to get a creamer soon because I want to start to be able to start offering bees in the weeds creamed honey, which if you don't know what creamed honey is, it's like crystallized honey and it has the consistency of almost like a thick butter. It's very common in Europe. It's not so common here in the United States. You don't hardly see it anywhere, but there is a big market for it. And the demand, I mean, the demand is, is once people try it, they've never had it here or whatever. Once they try it, their eyes light up like, oh my God, this is great. But there's no supply here. There's very, there's, there's very few local raw honey producing beekeepers. There's even fewer local raw creamed honey. And uh, so, you know, that is something I'm hoping to be able to offer my customers. If next year I plan on being at the local farmer's market here in LaGrange, Kentucky on Saturdays, and I would love to be able to add creamed honey to my uh, product list to, that I have to offer to my customers. So, and you can add flavorings to it. Uh, so my buddy, Dave Hansberry, um, who's always a few steps ahead of me, <laughs> has many, many different flavors of creamed honey. He has a vanilla bean one, which is excellent. I think he has like a peanut butter one. There's, I mean, there's, it, it's really good. It's chocolate one is fantastic. He has all sorts. Cinnamon one is excellent. So I could go on and on, but, uh, yeah, it's basically you have to buy the creamer. And then my understanding is I would be able to use this once the creamed honey is, is done. I can pour that creamed honey from the creamer into here, bottle it, put it, you have to cool creamed honey for, I think a few weeks or is it a week? I can't remember exactly. I'll be sure to pick Dave's brain when I'm ready for it. Cause his creamed honey is outstanding. But uh, yeah, I think this will get more use than just bottling honey. I'll be able to bottle creamed honey as well. At least that's the idea. So yeah, two thumbs up on this. Excellent product, Max Ant. I, I will definitely be looking at other products that they make as a result of this. You know, if I need to upgrade my extractor or, you know, like I said, the creamer or something like that, I'll definitely be giving Max Ant a look at, uh, you know, in the future for my honey processing equipment needs because th this is a 10 out of 10 in my opinion. And I'm just sitting here looking at the thermometer and it's maintaining that temperature perfectly. So really, really good stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you're not a subscriber of mine, uh, I hope to see you back again on the channel. Leave me a comment. I love reading everyone's comments and interacting with you guys. You guys are super nice and you know, I really appreciate all the, all the nice words that you guys provide, but, um, yeah, that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys on the next one.